Good morning, everyone. Uh, on behalf of our director, Juan Carlos T. Gonzalez, I welcome everybody to the Museum's second biodiversity seminar for 2021. We hold this seminar series as a way to promote biodiversity education and conservation. Our speaker today is Dr. Ireneo, or we call him June, Lit Jr. He is the museum's curator for scale insects and other terrestrial arthropods. He also served as our past director for around nine years. Currently, he's a full rank professor at the Institute of Biological Sciences, heading its environmental biology division. An outstanding and multi-awarded teacher, researcher, and, and, and on many occasions, a poet and a writer, Dr. Lit is a highly regarded insect taxonomist and systematist in the Philippines. Everybody, let's all give a big, warm, virtual welcome to Sir June Lit. Sir June, take it away. Okay. Good morning. Magandang umaga. Uh, malino ba aking audio? I, yes, sir. It's clear. Adjust ko lang yung aking screen. So, mukhang madilim yung aming kwarto. But uh, anyway, it's a, it's a good day. Uh, as Flor has mentioned, uh, this is a repeat performance, sort of. But uh, so I think there have been two occasions where I delivered this paper. Uh, the first one it was requested by students from the School of Environmental Science and Management. The other one was it was in the Museum of Natural History, I think, so many, many years ago. But uh, this is the first time that we are uh, presenting this online. And uh, of course, with, with uh, more uh, students uh, coming in, and because of the pandemic also, there have been many questions that, we, that have been uh, thrown to us. And so I decided to add also other questions. And um, there are, uh, let me, I will be shifting from Tagalog, English, and then English, Tagalog, uh, to, to emphasize things, especially that our uh, audience uh, is wide ranging. I see some names of my former students, some of my advices, uh, which means more or less they already have the knowledge. I also see some names of taxonomists and botanists and zoologists around, but I see more people, more students that are from, from non-biology courses. And uh, that's why I think uh, we need to, I, I hope I can be able to, what's that? Uh, they say when you talk science, it's like talking Greek. But and but we're discussing scientific names, so it's talking Latin. But I'll try to translate it into more understandable or into laymanized terms. So let me start by sharing my screen. Okay, nakikita ba? So uh, the title now is Updated Orders. Of course, uh, it's not for Lazada or Shopee. <laughs> Sabi nga ni Ma'am uh, Marian, uh, italicize scientific names. That's always, why do, why do we have to italicize scientific names? And other FAQs or frequently asked questions about biological nomenclature. Uh, as Flor has mentioned, I'm teaching at the Institute of Biological Sciences but I actually grew up in the museum from since 1987. Uh, started as a university research uh, associate and now uh, serving also as continue, continuing my service as curator. Now, uh, hello. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. I can hear yeah. you, sir. Hirap pag walang nagre-react, no? <laughs> okay. So, uh, this started with five frequently asked questions. First, why do I have to use scientific names? Second, 
why are scientific names italicized or underscored or underlined? Third, why do scientific names and classification systems or schemes, including orders, of, especially of insects, uh, of some organisms change? Uh, number four, why should my first mention of the scientific name of the organism that you're studying use the full or complete citation? How do I have the scientific name of my organism or the scientific name that, uh, or the organism that you're studying? How do you have that, that checked by specialists? Uh, there have been other questions, but I trimmed them down to just six. And so here's the sixth. Which code do we follow for scientific names of viruses? Especially that uh, up to now there is a debate, are viruses living or non-living? Uh, do we have to italicize their uh, scientific names even if they are not Latin? Okay, so uh, in the course of my talk, uh, we will try to answer them, maybe not in that, not necessarily in this order of one, two, three, four, five, six. But uh, let's begin. Why are sci why do we have why why scientific names? Why not just common names? <clears throat> of course, the first answer uh, first answer is as you already as many of already many of you already know. Alam na natin yon. Scientific names are universal. Unlike uh, if you have common common names, and uh, all of us know know this already. Uh, common names vary among languages. And uh, for example, if you are a Cebuano and somebody says langam, you look up because that refers to a bird in Cebu, in, in Visaya. But if you are a Tagalog, especially uh, here in Laguna and Quezon, langam is an ant. Of course, Batangueñas will have uh, uh, Will be more specific. It's a black. If it's a black ant, it's guyam. If it's a uh, uh, a big ant that that bites, that will be hantik. If it's a non-biting ant, that will be to the Batangueños uh, apanas. Okay. So there are uh, unlike scientific names. Even if you are in Japan or in, in the United States, uh, Oraisa Sativa is Oraisa Sativa. Uh, Oraisa Sativa in Tagalog is Palay, but there are other Tagalogs for that, that which means uh, it depends also on culture and subcultures. For example, uh, for, for in the English language, rice is just the English, the common name for Orisa Sativa, but in, in Tagalog, it will be, if it's cooked, it's kanin. If it, is, if it is the plant or the newly harvested grain, it's palay. If it's uh, sticky rice, it's malagkit. If it's uh, burnt, then it's tutong. Okay, uh, next. Uh, the, universal, the universality of scientific names has connotations. It means that if a, a correct scientific name appears in your paper, then your paper is really scientific. It's not just any other paper. That means your literature review is updated and therefore uh, it adds to the international uh, internationality of your article. That also, by internationality, that means it also gives greater searchability, which means uh, mass available. It's your, your paper becomes more available. Your paper becomes more accessible. And therefore, if it's more accessible, it's more citable. Nowadays, uh, citation index indices are uh, a big thing. And so correct scientific names are therefore 
a must. So that brings us to systematics and taxonomy. Uh, are they different? Uh, systematics, taxonomy, uh, sometimes people call me a taxonomist, sometimes, sometimes they will call me a systematist, but actually systematics is broader than taxonomy. So here we go to some definitions. So taxonomy is the theory and practice of classifying and naming organisms. And therefore it's a part of and a product of systematics. Mas broad, mas malawak ang systematics. Uh, but taxonomy provides the database for systematics. And taxonomy is at the core of all things biology. Will, if you, if, if you think I would, I need to expound that, uh, you can ask that later. Why is taxonomy at the core of all things biology? Next, uh, it's the theory, taxonomy is the theory and practice of classifying organisms. So in that case, what is classification, by the way? Uh, ano nga ba ang classification? Uh, pag may pumupunta sa amin, minsan estudyante o minsan na uh, high school student na may project, senior high, uh, magpapaklasify po. Yung susunod naman, magpapa-identify po. At ang susunod na pinaka medyo na, 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 naninibago sa aming pandinig ay magpapa-authenticate po. <laughs> Alin nga ba ang tama? Classify, identify, authenticate. Sige. Classification is the ordering of organisms into groups or sets on the, on the basis of relationships. And usually, uh, pinakamadaling measure or indicator of relationship yung similarity, yung pagkakatulad-tulad. So kapag ka ang isang organism na gusto mong uh, makita kung anong bagay ay kung ano siya ay may balahibo, may feather, may tuka, so may idea na kayo, aba, ibon yon. So, ibig sabihin, ang manok ay isang ibon kasi ang manok may tuka at may uh, feathers. Ngayon, uh, most important aspects of classifying ay yung ginugrupo natin. Kumbaga, ito yung, ito yung una nating, isa sa mga una nating natutunan bilang bata. Yung pinagsasama-sama natin ang para-pareho. At uh, kumbaga, tinuruan tayo na, okay, pag nagsasama-sama natin yung shapes na bilog, dito triangle, or pagsasama-samahin ng isang bata ang ang mag, lahat ng kulay pula, lahat ng kulay green, lahat ng kulay blue, or lahat ng kulay yellow. And then, uh, syempre may mga grupo na mas malaki kesa sa ibang grupo. Ang isang, or, or on the other hand, pwede ang isang malaking grupo ay may mas maliliit na grupo. And therefore, the bigger group will have a higher rank. The smaller group will have lower rank. Katulad yon ng ating paggrupo na halimbawa lahat ng hayop ay kingdom animalia. Lahat ng halaman ay kingdom plantae. So ngayon ay may uh, currently ang sinusunod namin sa aming basic biology course ay six kingdoms. Siguro nung, nung kami nung siguro yung mga tatay nanay natin ay nung sila nag-aaral ay two kingdoms. Naabutan namin noong high school, three kingdoms. Pagdating dito sa college, five kingdoms. At ngayon, habang nagtuturo kami ng biodiversity, six kingdoms. Actually, it's possible na we will have as many as 12 even, uh, I mean, eight, even 12 kingdoms. Then, lower than kingdom, you have that phylum, or in, in the case of plants, you have division. So, para tayong nagre-review ng basic course, di ba? But this is essential. Uh, minsan nakakalimutan natin. So, ano nga ba? Magpapaklasify, magpapa-identify. Pag identification, we place individuals by deductive procedures into previously established classes. 
So, ibig sabihin, meron ka nang nagawang classification. Kaya pwede ka nang mag-identify. Kasi pag nag-classify ka, meron kang basis. Bakit mo inilagay sa isang grupo ang isang organism? Lalagyan mo ngayon yon yung susunod nating yung susunod nating tatalakayin ay yung nomenclature pero babalikan natin muna yan. Okay. Binigyan mo uh, nilagyan mo ng uh, nilagay mo yung characteristics, binigyan mo ng pangalan so that you can identify. And therefore, we can identify if there are previously established classes. Now, Uh, identification is the foremost among the areas of extension work of taxonomists. Pag sinabi natin extension work, this is sharing of knowledge. And therefore, before we can identify as a specialist, we have to study, we have to classify, we have to study the details. So being able to identify means somebody has classified, somebody has worked. Uh, and therefore, it takes patience. So we owe a lot to taxonomists for, for the literature that is available to us. That's why we can identify organisms now. Anything, anything in the internet now that, is, that has a website, has images and which we can compare. We often forget that they are products of uh, patient and at most, I mean, at most patients of taxonomists. So taxonomy is the science that has the least appreciation, but uh, highest value. So if you put the Kumbaga, mas madaling yung ibang sciences mas 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 madaling ma-appreciate. Pero uh, kumpara mo, hindi ka naman makaka-proceed sa ibang science kung wala ang iyong properly identified organism. And that's why we also mention here nomenclature. This is the application of distinctive names to each of the groups recognized in a classification system. Kinakailangan distinct ang names, distinct ang pangalan. Hindi pwedeng ang isang pangalan sa isang grupo ay may, kumbaga kagrupo niya pero may kapareho siyang pangalan. Mahihirapan ang mag-aaral. Uh, okay? So, that brings us again to another topic. The need to identify. Why do we need to identify? Can we not control cockroaches? We, do we need to say, ay, ipis, ano ba yan? Periplaneta Americana ba yan? O blat, uh, blatella something? E di, o nga naman. Kailangan mo pa bang scientific name? E di, sinelas na lang yon, Di ba? Pipitin mo ng ano. Or, pero in the long term, mahirapan naman siguro lahat ng tao na Uh, apak na lang ng apak sa mga ipis. We have to really see what, uh, if, if we want management, if we want, uh, baka naman yung ating ipis na, take note, hindi po lahat ng ipis ay mapaminsala. Makikita niyo po yan sa article ng isa nating kaibigan, sa nating estudyante, si Christian, na hin, Christian Lucanias, na hindi lahat ng ipis ay nakakaistorbo. Si, meron po siya mga bagong species at merong ipis na sa maniwala kayo hindi ay endangered. So, every scientific endeavor that involves living organisms requires that an investigator, a researcher, correctly identifies his or her organism. Why? Because the name, specifically the scientific name, holds the key to a treasure chest of information. Pag sinabi natin treasure chest of information, ando na lahat. Uh, pag, uh, lalo na ngayon na ang ating search engine ay Google. Sometimes you can also use Yahoo or other, uh, in other countries, meron silang ibang search engines. But the most common, the most uh, widely used is Google. 
And if you Google, for example, again, um, RICE, just put R-I-C-E. Lagay mo R-I-C-E. Baka, baka ang lumabas doon ay only rice, o kaya ay uh, half rice, or yung isang, sino nga, yung dating Secretary of State ng United States, Condoleezza Rice. Pwede yun. But if you place Oriza Sativa, dun, uh, you, you, you will already see that, oh, this is, these are the, this is the uh, phenology of that plant. This is how it terminates. These are the cultural characteristics. These are the varieties of that species. And therefore, <coughs> just to re reiterate, a correct scientific name is a key to a treasure chest of, of information. Or in the case of unstudied or understudied species, halimbawa, may bagong species na nakita, o kaya may isang species na hindi pa napapag-aralan pero sa tingin mo ay pwedeng makagamot sa uh, makatulong sa pagginhawa ng COVID patients then uh, that also presents pag wala kang pag pag ginugel mo at wala kang makita bawa uh, scientific name na hindi ko alamos nilagay mo doon so wala ah, wala wala nag-aaral nito that means it's an un unstudied or understudied species and therefore it presents to you a great opportunity to study it and discover more about it. Gets by on? Okay. The need to identify is also based on these questions. How will we conserve or manage in the case of pests or invasives what we do not understand? Paano natin pangangalagaan o kaya uh, uh, pamamahalaan ang isang hindi ba isang bagay o isang nilalang na hindi natin naintindihan? Then how will we understand what we do not know? Paano natin maintindihan, maunawaan ang isang hindi natin alam? How will we ever know what we cannot identify? Paano natin malalaman o alamin ang isang hindi natin maidentify, makilala? So, uh, in nomenclature, and uh, let me uh, base my discussion on zoological nomenclature, and and later uh, expand it to the other. Uh, in the course of my discussion, also cite the similarities and differences uh, among the three, or at least three. <clears throat> Uh, codes of nomenclature, the zoological nomenclature, uh, what was formerly called botanical nomenclature and bacterial nomenclature. <clears throat> so all of them, all of those three codes of nomenclature uh, sets the most important properties in the names of taxa. One is uniqueness, two is universality, three is stability. So, <clears throat> uniqueness, that's, that means every name has to be unique because it is the key to the entire literature relating to that species or higher taxon. So when you say kingdom animalia, it's just, it's just kingdom animalia. <clears throat> or uh, that's when, when you say something that like uh, zia maize, then that's, that refers only to corn, no, nothing else. Because uh, it has to be unique because it is a key. Uh, it's not like a, it's not like something else that you have two key, two different keys with the different sets of, um, you, you know, anong, anong tawag doon sa susi, yung parang teeth. Uh, the other key will not open properly. To, to, the, to unlock the three, the, what we call the treasure chest of information. Other one is universality and it is the purpose actually for nomenclature is for ease of communication. It will be difficult as I have said, if we only use vernacular names and the codes of nomenclature 
are adopted by international agreement. That means all botanists agreeing to the code of botanical nomenclature, all zoologists agreeing to the code of zoological nomenclature and so on. And by convention, they have agreed on a single language. It's Latin. Uh, if I think students have been asking me, bakit po Latin? Bakit hindi po English? Uh, that has historical uh, uh, origins. Uh, during the time of Linnaeus, it was the, the language of the learned was Latin. Uh, yung mga marurunong ay yung mga ma, uh, matataas ang, ang pinag-aralan, ang lingwahe ay Latin at yan ay nagsimula sa simbahan. <coughs> Pagkatapos, kita nyo rin yan sa ngayon na ang mga doktor at mga abogado ay minsan nag, para hindi ko alam, para, ma, para magkaintindihan ng mga abogado at kapwa-abogado, doktor at kapwa-doktor, at sa isang banda ay maipakita na rin na, ah, ako ay doktor na manggagamot. Ako ay abogado. Uh, Latin ang ginagamit. So you have, for example, use sanguinis or uh, ipso facto, mga ganyang termino. O kaya instead na sabihin sa inyo na uh, mataas ang iyong kolesterol, sabihin ng doktor, you have hypercholesterolemia. Ang haba naman, no? Pero Latin yon Uh, kung nagkataon na ngayon ginawa ang system, sistema nature, siguro English. So it ha, yun yung ibig sabihin lang doon. Bakit siya naging Latin? And now, each code is independent. We will explain this later again. So, stability is needed to avoid confusion and impediments to information retrie retrieval that would likely result from any change of a well-established name. Kinakailangan na uh, hindi basta-basta napapalitan ang scientific names. <coughs> Kasi nga, we need, kailang, kailangan, uh, bukod sa universal, lahat ng purpose nito ay information retrieval. Pag masyadong pabago-bago, ay malimit, malilito ang mga readers or researchers. So, uh, let's see first the international, uh, the first code that we will tackle. The International Code of Nomenclature for Algae, Fungi, and Plants. Uh, a few years ago, it was the Melbourne Code. Uh, mas malimit, mas malimit mag-meet, uh, magkita-kita ang mga botanists. And so, the, what is being followed now is the, what we call, what they call the Shenzhen Code which was a product of the International Botanical Congress uh, that's uh, 19th, I mean 19th International Botanical Congress. <coughs> it was formerly called, it, it was formerly called uh, the International Code of Botanical Nomenclature, but it is more properly known now as International Code of Nomenclature for Algae, Fungi, and Plants. Kasi hindi na lang plante. Alam natin na humiwalay na ng kingdom ang fungi at iba na rin ang algae. Okay. Yung pangalawa ay International Code of Zoological Nomenclature. Ito yung dahil ang pinag-aaralan ko ay mga insekto at iba pang arthropods, mas, kilala ko, mas familiar ako sa International Code of zoological nomenclature, or sometimes called zoological code. Uh, may ang huling meeting ay nung year 2000 pa, pero palagi na mga nag-update ito. The last updating was in 2012. Uh, the original code and its revision was uh, uh, under the International Congress of Zoology which is now be, being taken over by the General Assemblies of IUBS, or International Union of Biological Sciences. So, <clears throat> yung kanina, kung, ma, kung mapansin nyo, uh, printed, may printed at PDF version itong sa, uh, 
sa uh, algae, fungi, and plants. Pero itong zoological, uh, mas available siya, may available naman din siya online. Uh, wala na yung printed talaga. But look here, for example, uh, there, the amendments, including that for e-publication, are embodied in, in the revisions <coughs> or amendments, as I have mentioned, that took effect on January 2012. Uh, <coughs> so the zoological code is governed by a judicial body. So para itong uh, kumbaga, pinaka Supreme Court ng zoology. This is the International Commission on Zoological Nomenclature. Uh, they are, this body, this group of uh, zoologists, they're the ones who interpret the rules and publish opinions on controversial issues. And they can set aside, for example, priority and other provisions of the code when they violate the principle of stability. <clears throat> Mas mahalaga sa mga zoologists ang stability. Pero kung para nyo sa mga botanist, mas metikuloso ang mga botanist. And they have both valid reasons for that. So, for zoology, as I've mentioned, it's in, uh, the governing principles are independence. I think that's also true for uh, for, for, for simplicity, gamitin ko na rin na botanical code. But you know, as I have mentioned, it's not botanical code. Uh, so even the botanical code and the code of bacteriological code are independent of each other. Uh, the starting date for zoology is January 1, 1758. Uh, all of the three subscribe to stability pero mas stricto sa stability ang zoology. Uh, that there's also the principle of freedom of taxonomic thought. There's also the principle of priority. All of the priority is true for all the three codes. The first revisor principle is also true for all the three codes and the range of authority is only for, for example, zoology is for only for animals, the botanical code only for plants, algae, and fungi, and bacteria for bacteriological code for bacteria and archaea. So, uh, again, just to emphasize, ICZN is independent of, independent from the code of uh, for for plants and fu fungi, as well as the code for bacteria. And therefore, the application of names, applications of names are mutually independent. So names have to be unique within the animal kingdom. But let's say you have, a, <coughs> you have a genus Papilio, which is a genus of uh, butterflies. You can also use that for plants. That's not, that's, that's allowable. Kasi plant naman ang ginamit po. Uh, kung gusto mo nga, uh, pwede mo rin gamitin yun for bacteria. And that's, 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 that's perfectly all right. Although wala pa akong... I think ang nakita ko na <coughs> common ay uh, yung cocus, C-O-C-C-U-S. Meron ganun sa, sa bacteria. And cocus is also a genus of insects. So I'm uh, just to repeat it and to emphasize applications of names in the three codes are mutually independent. Now, in zoology, then there is no, uh, <clears throat> the start is January 1, 1758, and no name published before this date is deemed available, except for uh, <clears throat> spiders, uh, Clerks Arane Suesici was published actually in 1757, but by the ruling of the uh, Zoological Code, it was deemed published January 1, 1758. So that uh, 
kahit na 1757 ang publication ng Arani Swesici, pag mag a siya ngayon sa literature, it's 1758. Para mag, para ma-accept siya sa code. And then, ano nga ba yung priority? To be available, take note of that, available and valid, magkaiba yun. Ang available, didefine natin mamaya. To be available, a name has to be written in conformity with uh, in the zoological code, articles 10 to 20. Pero yung isa, to be valid, the name of the taxon is the oldest available name. So magkaiba pala yung valid at available. Kasi yung valid, it has to be the oldest available name. Okay? So priority refers to priority of publication, not priority of usage. So kahit na una kang gumamit ng scientific name na isa na let's say you use a scientific name but you have not published it properly in the sense of the botanical code or the zoological code or the bacteriological code then it's not yet available. So <clears throat> ibig sabihin uh, hangga't hindi mo na pa-publish hindi pa yon available. Okay? And therefore, publication is an essential part of taxonomic science. Hindi nagiging kumpleto ang pagiging taxonomist kung walang publication. In such, uh, kung, kung pareho mo sinabay yung pareho ang, parehong pangalan sa isang taxon or parehong taxon pero dalawang pangalan, uh, yun yung may uh, tinatin, yung kanina, same name, uh, two names to the same taxon, those are synonyms. Pero same name to two taxons, that's homonym. In such case, uh, yung isa, pag homonym, nagiging junior, hindi yun available. Ibig sabihin, I mean, I mean available, pero hindi siya valid. <coughs> Kasi, nung ginawa siyang available, ay meron ng naka-occupy. May nauna na. Ganon din sa kaso nitong isa. The older available, the, the older available name has, is, is valid, but the younger available name is not valid. Naintindihan ba yun? Pwede natin ipaliwanag ulit mamaya kung hindi naintindihan. Uh, yung first reviser principle naman ng zoological code it's the action of the first reviser. For example, uh, for, a, for quite a long time, uh, we have been basing our studies on, of uh, springtails or columbola on the studies of uh, Dr. Gapud, which was in, seven, in the 70s. So walang ibang reference. So suddenly, uh, may, may nagka-interest na mag-aral. And uh, actually, that's uh, one of my advices, Miss um, Marnelli Soto Alviola. Uh, in effect, she is a first reviser. So it should be, therefore, pa pag na publish yung kanyang work, it will be adopted as the standard, the new standard for all uh, names of Columbola in the Philippines. And that principle helps stabilize nomenclature in many ways. So, just to emphasize again, to be available, a name must be published, must have been published. Kinakailangan para maklasify na published, legitimate ang publication. And from the <clears throat> from the point of view of from the point of view of all sets of nomenclature, a legitimate publication should be a name accompanied by a description. If it is just a name, then it's like a, a, a human being without the proper dress. And that's why the name, the term in, in, uh, in nomenclature is nomen nudum or nude name. Pag walang description. And before the year 20, 
uh, mas estricto ang botanical. It's not just a description. It should be a Latin diagnosis. Sa zoology, mas ano, okay lang na English, okay lang na kahit uh, vernacular, uh, I mean, uh, any language, basta may description. Now, the other one is effectively published. By effective publication, hindi pwedeng pinablish mo lang sa isang uh, newspaper or daily magazine or uh, nilagay mo lang sa, sa iyong blog or website. Hindi pwedeng gano'n. Kinakailangan sa isang a uh, reputable peer reviewed scientific journal or if it's a book it should be also peer reviewed because not being peer reviewed it should be uh, uh, at least two referees uh, na talagang pinag-aralan yung kung wasto o akma ang iyong mga ginawa doon sa iyong propositions because that's actually how science works. So kung, kung species, you have a binomial name. It should be a genus plus the specific name. Kung subspecies, it's trinomial, which means genus, species, and subspecies. <clears throat> availability is not equal to validity, as I mentioned. But availability is one requirement for validity. So, hindi naging available yung homonym at yung, kasi ang tawag natin doon ay preoccupied. Meron ng nakapwesto. May nauna ng gumamit nung pangalan na yun. Uh, I think na, na, na discuss ko na to, so I'll proceed. Effective publication, synonyms, I think na discuss ko na to. <coughs> Okay, there are also synonyms that are objective or subjective. Sometimes uh, people who don't have access to the, the actual basis of the publication of a name just uh, uh, base their uh, thinking or interpretation of a name on on their uh, on the published uh, description. And therefore, that's actually what you call subjective synonym. Uh, <clears throat> that it can also be based on, if a subjective uh, synonym can be names based on different type materials. Kung baga, kinolekta ko itong species A sa Mount Makiling at nakolekta rin ng isang uh, nakolekta ng Siguro bigay ako ng isang example. Um, yung Rafflesia uh, panchoana ay parehas lang ng Rafflesia uh, lagaski. Uh, magkaibang type, material, pero taxonomists uh, nonetheless decide that they belong to the same taxon based on other evidences. Pag objective, yun talagang parehong specimen or illustration na maaring, there are cases like that uh, na akala nung taxonomist hindi pa niya na-describe, binigyan niya uli ng bagong pangalan. So that's an objective uh, synonym. Just one of the examples. <clears throat> Pag nakalimutan ng pangalan, walang gumagamit, that's a forgotten name or nomen oblitu. Uh, in such cases, halimbawa, marami nang gumamit ng yung tinatawag natin, halimbawa, yung, yung, yung uh, corn ear Oh? Yung ba? Narinig ba ako? Tumutunog. Can you still hear me? Yes, yes po. Okay, sige. We can hear you. May, just, uh, interrupt, just may, may sure. interruption lang po. Okay lang, okay lang. De, uh, okay rin para... One time kasi ako yung nasa klase, nagsasalita ako. Uh, ten minutes na palang wala ako, eh, dire-diretso yung lecture ko. Eh, wala namang reaction yung aking mga estudyante. Ito yung hirap pag uh, online, no? 
Anyway, let's continue. <coughs> we have uh, cases like a conserved name. Ano nga bang ginagawa natin ito? <coughs> Isang example, pahinom muna ng kape ha? There's a name of the corn earworm uh, which if we will base on the principle of priority, the name of the corn earworm should be Helicoverpa barbara. But uh, the name, the basis of the name Barbara has been, is a forgotten name. So even if it is available, it is valid, but it's a forgotten name. And people have been using what is now referred to as Helicoverpa armigera. What the, uh, magugulo ang literature retrieval, magugulo ang nomenclature, kung babalikan pa yung Barbara. What the entomologist did was to petition the International Commission on Zoological Nomenclature to conserve the name Armigera. And so, uh, <coughs> Armigera now, Helicoverpa Armigera is a conserved name, Nomen Conservandu. And uh, the other name, Helicoverpa Barbara, has been listed now as a forgotten name. Kasi uh, pag uh, ang criteria doon dapat uh, to be deemed widely used or widely established, the name has to be, is in use for the last 50 years, used by at least five different authors and in at least 10 publications. Kung bawa, uh, 50 years, pero isang author lang naman ang gumamit, hindi pwedeng i-claim na siya ay widely established or well-established or widely used. Uh, this is just for uh, determining priority in case the name appears, two names appear in the same publication. So you determine which comes first, which, which was mentioned first. Now, the third code, the International Code of Nomenclature of Bacteria, ICNB, uh, this, this applies for bacteria including archaea. Originally, there was the international, they, they followed the International Code of Botanical Nomenclature. But uh, these were eliminated during the International in Congress in 1975. An earlier code for bacteria was approved at the Fourth International Congress of, for Microbiology. That was in 1947, but that's, that was discarded. And a later version was published in 1990. And that has been published in the International Journal for Systematic and Evolutionary Microbiology. So the rules are maintained by the International Committee on Systematics of Prokaryotes. Uh, <clears throat> so ICSP. So doon po yung mga bacteria, archaea, doon po yun ang sinusunod na ngayon. Okay, the, ne the next question ay, why do we italicize? Bakit ina-underline? Bakit ina-underscore? Bakit italicized? Uh, there's that is really emphasized in kahit high school pa lang na kailangan talaga pagsusulat kayo ng scientific name, kumbaga handwritten, underline it. If you're using computer or uh, a printer, then you have to highlight or you have to underscore. And that that's actually to highlight or differentiate the name from other words in an article or book. And why? Because you need to recognize them easily, especially now that we have abstracting and indexing uh, agencies or institutions. We are, helping, we are helping them index our journal, our article, and it makes them easier for, to help you that your paper be recognized and cited. The other major reason is because they are not English, they are Latin. Although uh, some names have been Latinized or lat 
uh, not actually Latin now, but once they are used as scientific names, they are considered Latin. So even if, for example, there's a genus named by my advisor, Dr. Leonila Raros, she named one of her gen mite genera as Kalayaan. Uh, that's when, when that word is used as a scientific name, Kalayaan is considered Latin, although it is effectively Latinized. Now, what about viruses? For example, SARS-CoV-2 or severe acute respiratory syndrome, coronavirus, uh, yung, yung different variants of those. There's now a, an international code for the virus classification and nomenclature, and it is governed by the International Committee on the Taxonomy of Viruses, or ICTV. That committee is the one that authorizes and organizes the taxonomic classification of viruses. So for example, you have, what's the scientific name of the virus that causes AIDS? It's the acronym is HIV, but the full name is human immunodeficiency virus. So it's always there. Usually it's the host, and then the symptom or the effect, and then the word virus. So three, at least usually always three words, human immunodeficiency virus. Or for example, for, for tobacco, it's tobacco mosaic virus, TMV. Uh, uh, medyo mahaba yung uh, SARS-CoV-2 because actually that's human severe, merong human sa unahan, but just for uh, for uh, better commu uh, mas ma mas mapadali ang communication, uh, tinanggal nila yung word na human, but there's still that severe acute respiratory syndrome coronavirus, and they have their own system of classification. Uh, for example, uh, family names of animals end in IDAE, ED, and then family names of plants end in ACEAE, ACE -E, or CE. Uh, I think the same for bacteria. <coughs> but for viruses, family names of viruses end in something like similar to animals. So, for example, family, family coronaviridae or the family of coronaviruses. And so we also have to italicize H, the, the scientific name of the virus, even if they are not Latin, but in English. So when you mention your, the scientific name of HIV, human immunodeficiency virus, then that should be italicized now based on the code of virus classification and nomenclature. Oh, so because actually they developed that universal taxonomic scheme for viruses and they aim to describe all the viruses of living organisms. Uh, <clears throat> they, as I mentioned, they are governed by the virology division now of IUMS. And uh, as, of, as of 2005, they have 1,950 virus species of course they have a of course they have a different definition of what a virus species is now what about cultivated plants especially nowadays that there are so many there are so many plantitos and plantitas uh nagkakagulo sa code of nomenclature for cultivated plants uh we have to consult that uh code for naming cultivated plants. And uh, the use of double quotation marks and single quotation marks should be properly observed. Actually, there should be a registry of uh, varieties of cultivated plants for each group. Unfortunately, it's not uh, strictly implemented internationally. And sometimes, uh, for example, there's no registry of 
uh, the Donya series or Mosaendas in the Philippines. Uh, mas nauna pa yung Indonesia at Malaysia but actually the origin the original the origin of the Musa, cultivated musaendas ay dito sa UPLB so, under the leadership of uh, the late national scientist Joscoro Umali in case you discover something new and you want to give a name <coughs> how do you form names Uh, if you're naming after a male person, then for zoology, it's just one I. But for plant names, it should be double I. For uh, females, it should be AE for zoology. And for botany, it should be E or IAE. For example, uh, my late friend Monina Shiar, Uh, merong hoya na ipinangalan sa kanya. Instead of share, it should be share. If it is a mixed group or all male persons, it's orum. So for example, if you want to name a, a, a species after uh, backstreet boys, they're all boys. So it should be backstreet boys orum. If it's an all-female group, let's say, uh, ano bang all-female group? Uh, ano mas bago? Mamaya. It should be, anyway, it should be Arum. If it's a name of a place, it should be Ensis or Ensis. And that's why uh, I saw something like Bubalus Carabinensis in some literature. Of course, the name is invalid. But I have been looking for a place called Carabina, but there's no Carabina. Mukhang nagkamali yung ano. Naggawa ng name. Anyway, there are also adjectival forms like ana, anum, anus, ianum, ianus. For example, if you have hoya espaldoniana, that literally translates to espaldonian hoya in honor of uh, our friend Dr. Vicky Spaldon. Although it's more popularly known as Vicky Spaldon's hoya or Vicky's hoya. Bakit nga ba papalit-palit ang scientific name? Why do scientific names change? Walang magawa ang mga taxonomist? Nililito lang ba kayo? Actually, scientific names are based on descriptions of species. Now, descriptions of, of species are actually hypotheses. When you present hypotheses in science, you have to present data. And those data are available are based on the data available at the time of description. And because systematics or taxonomy is a dynamic science, technological advances necessarily allow the generation of new as well as new data as well as the examination of classic data. So during the time of Linnaeus, the only available uh, Walang, mag, walang magandang microscope. So they describe insects mainly based on maybe number of wings or type of wings. They were not able to examine details of mouth parts except for the larger insects. And so, uh, madali sa kanila ang classification ng insects. But after some time, uh, mas marami nang nag-aral ng details and therefore uh, re-examination of classic data means you can advance and necessarily some species have to be split into further uh, new species or separate species. Why are some authors' names enclosed in parentheses, but others are not? Parentheses, enclosing an author's name, denotes that there has been a transfer from one genus to another, or what we call generic transfer. In botany, this is called from one bastion name to another. So, halimbawa, uh, may, may example tayo mamaya. Ito. Uh, the zoology, Pala, the mere enclosure of an 
of the original author's name in parentheses is sufficient. But in botany and bacteriology, the new combination should also cite the author of the combination. And in virology, there's no need to cite author's names in the scientific names of viruses. So for example, uh, I collected a species of mealybug near the peak of Mount Apo in, 1990, in 1988, described it in 1992 as Balanococcus sumus. Subsequently, when Williams revised uh, the, the mealybugs of Southeast Asia, he transferred it to <clears throat> the genus Trionemus, and therefore, my even if my species is still valid, it, my name has to be enclosed in parentheses. It doesn't have to uh, include the name of, uh, of my senior colleague Williams. Sapat na yung nakaparentesis yung author, yung origin, author ng original name. Pero pag uh, botany, for example, Guadua Filipinensis was the original combination of the name that refers to Laak Bamboo, and then a bamboo that is endemic to the Davao uh, area. Uh, it was transferred to Bambusa, and this transfer was uh, uphold, upheld by uh, Dr. Rojo in the year 2000, I think. So it has to be Bambusa Filipinensis parenthesis Gamble as the author of the original name, and then McClure as the author of the combination. So sabi ko nga mas meticuloso ang mga botanist. They have a good reason for that. Uh, kung halimbawa mali yung or walang walang description yung original name at ni resurrect or kinurek, uh, kin meron din dira tawag na X. Yun yung uh, names of correctors or revises sa botany can also be cited. <coughs> what about names with more than three authors? Uh, you have the option to cite all the names at first mention pag more than three authors. Problema lang natin, there are now taxa that are or species that have more than 20 and I that would be a cumbersome. Uh, me, uh, I mean, move. But just the same, uh, inciting multiple authors, when there are three or more joint authors responsible for a name, they may be expressed by the first uh, et al, following the name of the first author. Okay. For example, that's also true for the botanical nomenclature. This is. Uh, Hindi naman nabago from the St. Louis code up to the Shenzhen code. And <clears throat> sometimes the ampersand, yung ganitong structure, yung parang G-clef. Pinapayagan siya. And then, look at this. Uh, minsan et, pag, dal, pag two authors. But again, et al or al, which means uh, and others. And for example, La Perusia <clears throat> Erythranta variety, well with, chi, well with chai, Baker, yan, nakaparentesis si Baker as the original author. And then the author of the combination, Jirink, Lisowski, Malays, and Simons. Pero pwede na siyang isight as L, Erythranthra variety with well, which I uh, baker, parenthesis yung baker, and then Jiring et al, or et al. Same, the citation, ganun pa rin sa bacteria, pwede rin yung et al. Now, the type concept, uh, <clears throat> pag magde-describe, kinakailangan ngayon meron ng type. At sa Pilipinas, specifically, kailangan legal ang type. Pag sinabing legal, hindi poached. So zoology, meron pang tinatawag na paratype. Pero ito yung equivalent sa botany ng isotype. So zoology, in the olden days, meron pang allotype, which is a paratype, one of the paratypes, but of the, op of the sex opposite the holotype. 
Okay, meron pang tinatawag na sim type, cotype. Okay. Uh, the holotype is the single specimen chosen from among the individuals available and on which the original description was based. This is the same as nominifer in other literature. Paratypes or isotypes are the other specimens present together with the holotype designated as such in the original description of the species. Okay. Minsan sa older literature, hindi nag-designate ng holotype and all of them are therefore considered syntypes or cotypes. And subsequent revisers has to have to choose uh, from those syntypes of cotypes that will now be called lectotype and all the others para lectotypes. Neotype is, for example, nasunog nung panahon ng Hapon, ng World War II, ang maraming uh, uh, holotypes ng botanical species and zoological species. We have to look for the, the name bearer. And so we have to look for a replacement specimen. It's a, it's a great responsibility that is not yet uh, fulfilled for many groups that are not yet well studied or not have not been revised. <clears throat> Hapantotype, these are for complex organisms where a single specimen actually consists of several individuals, example, are corals and some other groups, including Portuguese man of war, ganon. So complex organisms. Now, the, one other question was, what about if we use scientific names as common names? I think that's okay. And actually, ma, basta tama. Except if the scientific name is very long, for especially the long, long generic name, long scientific name, and actually, for example, pag ganito kahabang scientific name mo, mahirap yata ang gamitin common name. Para Estratuspicomaya, Estratuspicomayoides. That actually names near soldier wasp fly yung genus and spe what well, it's a it's a fly. So mahirap yata pag ganyan. Pero okay lang. Ang, ang malimit ngayon sa mga plantito plantita ginagamit na rin yung mga scientific name as common name. Pero sana tama. And this is contributed by my friend uh, Prof Adrian Yusuf Petran. Ito ang ginagamit nilang common name nito ay golden pot hose. So pothos po, P-O-T-H-O-S, hindi pothos. Iba yung F-O. Yung iba ang spelling P-H-O-T-O-S, hindi po. Uh, pothos is actually a genus. <clears throat> Pero yung itinitindi nilang golden pothos, eh ito po. It's actually, according to our friend, uh, the expert aroid specialist, si, si Adrian, Epipremnum premnum aureum po. Nung panahon na ako yung nag-aaral ng millibugs, scale insects, at nagkokolekta, syndapsus aureus pa lang po ito. Meron din ngayon na uh, velvet pothos. Yun naman yung uh, syndapsus uh, pictus. So, sana tama. Kasi ang pothos po, pag titignan nyo, ito yan. Ito yung tunay na pothos formerly known as Pothos hermaphroditus, but it's now Pothos scandens. Tingnan nyo, ibang-iba yung, yung dahon ng isa o kaiba. Sana tama. So okay lang na common, scientific name becomes common name. Marami na din naman ngayon. For example, common name na yung Hoya. But there are many species of Hoya. But at least uh, lahat nila, ay, pabili ng Hoya or bigyan mo ako ng Hoya. So Hoya has become a common name for all species that belongs to the genus Hoya. Uh, meron bang isa? This, is, this one is from our friend, Prof. Ivy Amor Lambio. Malimit din, nakikita, ginagamit na nilang common, ay pabili ng sphagnum, pabili ng uh, panglagay sa halaman, but actually sphagnum is a genus um, that belongs to the family is Phagnaceae. It's a moss that uh, it's a group of mosses 
with 526 accepted species names. And specifically, the genus Sphagnum has around seven to eight species in the Philippines. Pero ano nga ba ang Sphagnum? Pit moss, ganyan ang itsura talaga. <coughs> At ito yung nakita ni uh, Ma'am Ivy sa Bukidnon. It's interspersed with some Drosera and Cyrus species sa Limbawon, sa Bukidnon. Pero ano yung tinitinda? Sa, sana tama din. Sphagnum moss talaga ito. Pero pit moss, ganito na yan. Pero yung misa na binibigay sa inyo, hindi naman pit moss, kundi coco pit. Ito rin. This is actually sphagnum pit moss imported from Canada, even New Zealand. Uh, minsan, ayan, from Mountain Province, Ganito ang sphagnum moss or pit moss. Ito yung sphagnum naman from China. And if you look, yung mga available online, uh, by weight din yan. So makita nyo, about 28 pesos. So pinagkakakitaan din. And actually, some sphagnum, true sphagnum species have been listed uh, by the late Dr. Tan as uh, vulnerable. What about insects? Ito, uh, we have to update our orders. <clears throat> uh, I'm talking about orders of insects. So there are now uh, insects are part of the superclass hexapoda. That means it's not sufficient to say what is an insect. Pag sinabi mong uh, animals with six legs, actually hexapods. All, all hexapods, kaya nga hexapoda, have six legs. So in the classification in 1954, there were 27 orders. When uh, Eames came out from the UK, came out with his classification, there were 29 orders. Going back to the US, 1964, there, there were 26 orders. <laughs> and in 1970, 31 orders. Late, uh, the latest uh, set was in 2014, Gallen and Cranston, there were three non-insect hexapods and 28 insect orders and more recent developments. So for ex example of those recent developments, uh, usually the changes occur in Hemiptera. There is no, no more order Homoptera because Homoptera is paraphyletic. Uh, the Yung kuto, tiraptera, the sucking lice, anoplura, and the biting lice, malophaga, have now have been lumped in tiraptera in the insects of Australia, but they are now together with the socoptera in the big order socodea. So magkakasama pala sila talaga, silang dati haywahaywalay. Dati anoplura, malophaga, there's another uh, order order for the larger lies, pero kasama na pala sila ngayon ng book lies, bark lies, so in the bigger socodea. Uh, variations also in the, in the previous classification occurred in the orthopteroid orders, especially blatodea, mantodea, phasmatodea, and then the recently discovered mantophasmatodea, but now, uh, look, cockroaches, uh, the former isoptera, wala na. There's no more isoptera. It's now part of Blatodea. And therefore, termites are being determined as just social cockroaches. So when you say uh, it's now the order Blatodea, there are two, uh, the true cockroaches, Blatodea, Blatodea. And the termites, Blatodea termitoidae. Termitoidae is an epi family. Sometimes they, have been, they are grouped under Dictyoptera. The other one, uh, Neuroptera, Megaloptera, and Refugioptera are all now split separately. Uh, Thysanura is sometimes called Zygentoma. And in old, some old literature, they were referred, it, it included diplura, but diplura is 
part of the non-insect hexapods. Uh, there might be a 